Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Las Vegas, welcome to Summer League, and welcome to the International Show. Uh, it's a big honor today. We have uh, with us uh, Paulis Monteyunas, the new CEO of uh, EuroLeague. So how does it feel? You're brand new, actually. <laughs> it's still surreal. I mean, uh, the transition is it's going to take time, but I feel like I'm still in basketball, so it's cool. It's just that everybody's looking at me in a different way now. <laughs> and uh, I'm not trying, you know, to say good things about you because you are the CEO, but you ha we have to say that you were unanimously appointed to do this. That's yeah. a big honor. All the shareholders voted for you. You know, uh, it means we have many things to do. <laughs> uh, it's a, like you said, it's a great honor. It's a respect and, and responsibility, obviously. Dejan Bodiroga remains the EuroLeague uh, president. And it has been an intense summer for EuroLeague. Lots of transfers, lots of changes. Uh, what does that tell you from your experience? You've been in basketball since like 2006, 2007 when it comes to EuroLeague. So what does that tell you? Why is it so busy? Interestingly busy. Uh, you know, it, you, you, you always look for that in, in the summer and you expect something. But uh, this year, especially with guys going to the NBA uh, and, you know, a couple of days ago, this Lucas uh, going to arch rival. So... I mean, it's it's normal business. All the teams want to win. Now Panathinaikos look like they want to rebuild completely. So it's, I think, the summertime. It's the most fun for the GMs to see what's you know how they can rebuild the teams. Exactly. And what brings you to Vegas? What brings you to summer league? I always come here, and you know, I've, I've been here. I think first time ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting experience, uh, mostly networking. Again, previously I'd look for the players, see who's doing what and and how they're performing. It's always better to see the guys live, and and then you know now the key priority is meeting the the NBA people. Uh, we have many Lithuanians <laughs> working in the clubs, True. so it's it's good to have everybody in the same building and you know to chat and and catch up. So summer league, without a doubt, is a meeting point. Some people might think it's you know a place that people that players want to showcase their talent, but it's more than that. We see now that it becomes more international than ever. We see here scouts, uh, agents, uh, players that are just visiting from all over the world, um, CEOs from other leagues, people that are here. As you said, it's uh, it's because of networking. How does it help you? How does it help you? How does um, it help with your experience around basketball? Like you become a better CEO, a better coach, a better player, a better agent. How does Summer League help you? You have more information. Mm -hmm. You know, you read everything on, on social media, on, on news channels, but once you see people live, you can ask in more detail, you know, what's going on with their club, what's going on with the players. So I think mostly the information the, so that you can share and you can get, uh, I think that's the key. So the final four and the season in general, uh, had a lot of attention when it came to social media. And uh, without a doubt, it was a really intense uh, Final Four, a really uh, big year for, for EuroLeague. But what does it tell you that people are following from all over the world? I mean, look at the, look at the people who are leaving to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Sasha Vezenkov, Vasa Micic, uh, uh, Exum, Dante Exum. We, we're still waiting to see if Tavares is leaving or not. You know, we, we are the league who... Are, who are feeding NBA with the good players. And now Wambayama also, you know, he played in with, with us uh, one year, then he went to a smaller team, but but still he, he's the attention of this uh, summer league. So, I mean, we this international ingredient is getting bigger and bigger and we have to somehow enjoy it and see how we can all sides make benefit mm -hmm. of it. So, in a sense, uh, it looks like me that you're saying that EuroLeague and EuroCup, they're working as a pool for the NBA I mean, at some point. Yes, I mean, the, still, the best players co uh, come here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the ones who were not <laughs> successful come back, but, but it's, it's back and forth. And mm -hmm. I think we have to find our identity as a league, but the best players leaving to, to give the chance and try themselves out in the NBA because NBA is and will be the best competition, club competition in the world. So, of course, if you're a professional player, you always want to try yourself out here. And, you know, majority of Euro EuroLeague uh, teams and some of EuroCup teams can have, you know, a, a, a starting point for those stars to mature. Mm -hmm. So, as we said before, you have an extensive experience within the EuroLeague ecosystem, allow me to say, and you've been in the Summer League for 10 summers. You know, cause, and you have been doing a great job uh, when you were in Zalgiris, you know, scouting for players and talent uh, in general. 
So you know how this whole thing works when it, we talk about growth. And we cannot talk about growth and, and not mention collaborations. Have you ever considered collaborating with Summer League? For future planning purposes. No, I mean, of course, we have to keep uh, keep keep ourselves open and and discuss and communicate. I have, you know, I would love to do something together. I would love to look at the opportunities, because again, it's the game of basketball, and this is key. If we can increase the you know the partnerships all around the world, it only helps the game of basketball and for us to compete against other sports and and other leisure uh, activities that people can have. Would it be achievable to say that we could have a summer league session? like a, five, a week or 10 days or less than that in Europe? I think everything's achievable. The, the question is how we find a gap uh, between the schedules, mm -hmm. the national teams and so on. So again, I'm, I'm open to sit down and start talking and, and see what we can do. If, if we can help the NBA mm -hmm. and we can benefit ourselves, it's, mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity for both sides. The other way around, um, have you ever considered, again, for uh, future planning purposes, uh, maybe you can send a team here in uh, Summer League, like an all-star team of young EuroLeague players? Again, we never, I never had a chance to think about it. Well, I have it. a lot of ideas right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, <laughs> we can talk once about we it. switch off the camera, <laughs> let's, let's go through the list and see what, what can be done, of course. But that would be really beneficial, I think, for the league as well, you know, sending those players here for the exposure and for the experience because being part of a Summer League team you you, uh, you can learn a lot of things, even if you are a coach, because we see a lot of assistant coaches from EuroLeague teams are here, Mr. Bozikas from Olympiakos, uh, Mr. Vovoras, other people are involved in, um, in Summer League, and that also only helps the growth of uh, yeah. EuroLeague. When, when you say to me to bring a team, I, of course, already think about would that team win <laughs> against all the other teams or not, but... Uh, but yes, exposure, like I said, it's, mm -hmm. it's, if, we, if it's a win-win situation, we need to take a look at it. And, and we, we should be open, and we are open to all these mm -hmm. ideas that you have written down. Mm -hmm. And all those things, they sound new, but when we talk about growth, we have to do new things to exactly. develop. And there's one more thing that people have been talking about when it comes to EuroLeague, and I know it's hard because of the, the schedule, because it's very intense schedule. We have double weeks. Uh, we have also the windows of the national teams. Uh, no time to rest for the players, no time even to rest <laughs> for all of us that we're involved in EuroLeague. But have you ever considered uh, to have an all-star game? We had this this idea, but uh, let's start with planes, mm -hmm. which again, proved to be successful for the NBA, and we will try it out next year in EuroLeague. Uh, let's see what that brings. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, to have an all-star game, it's it's not something that is... Uh, a successful event in Europe. Mm -hmm. I think many national leagues went away from this from this idea. But again, uh, if we look at the All Star Game, where we can bring everybody together, and mm -hmm. and you know even the NBA teams, if they would come over and and to socialize and to share ideas, to have the sponsors and all the all the basketball community together, why not? So I'm a basketball person. I've been around for EuroLeague, uh, for FIBA, and now for Summer League. I've done things with the NBA Europe, and I've seen that. If we work out the schedule of everything, you know, and that will take time because you need to, uh, to work uh, in advance, two years, three years ahead, uh, to think two years uh, or three years ahead. Will it be able to start not having those issues with, you know, players that they have to leave to play for the national team, things like that? Would it be achievable to say that we can have a calendar that can be common across the board with uh, the... Uh, with the NBA, it's a little difficult, but with EuroLeague, EuroCup, the FIBA competitions, I know it, it needs a lot of work. No, it needs a lot of work, but it has to start somewhere. So I think the idea is good if all sides sit at the same table and say, okay, what do we want? And if, if the goal is to have the best product possible, then of course we need to figure out who gives something to each other to make the product better. And if we all focus on that, I think it's, it's achievable. We don't have to pull into our side, you know, saying I want this, I want that, and then forget about the players and forget about the fans. In my op opinion, the fans are key, the product mm -hmm. is key, and if we focus on that, of course it's achievable. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, and uh, I think that if you're willing to sit down uh, at the table with all these people, it will only benefit the league, it will benefit everything, like even the national teams, because we saw a lot of national teams not being successful because they didn't have their star players. So I think that will be uh, very uh, beneficial, but I don't know how achievable can it be. 
Do you have like a long-term goal? I know you're a person who likes to, to do stuff, to think about, you know, uh, planning. So no, it has to it go. Work? No, it has to go step by step. We are in talks with uh, with FIBA. We we have discussions with them, and you know, we need to take a first step and then see where it, it can take us. I mean, there's a whole list of things we need to figure out. Of course, players are key because they have to rest. They mm -hmm. have to be insured. The clubs have to be protected also because of whatever happens, it, it affects the, the future results uh, of the clubs and, and the investment that the owners make. So we have to, you know, I know that we, it's impossible to have all the sides happy, mm -hmm. but we have to have the, the discussion in some direction where everybody's okay with what we got. And again, going back to the, what I said, if the fans see the best product, not the national teams, without the NBA, without EuroLeague, without Euro Cup, and with all due respect, it's sometimes the third level of players mm -hmm. and you call it exactly. a national team. I think it's, it damages the product and, and, and the game itself. Exactly. And since we're talking about product and the players, I think it's really important uh, what is happening when it comes to the youth level. You have the next gen uh, tournament here. Well, we also have the um, international um, tournaments that they do across uh, the world as a scouting um, destination most of the times. But we see a lot of talent from all over the world being in those uh, tournaments. I remember one in Treviso uh, two weeks ago. Are you willing to invest in that? Of course. You know, promote I next mean, gen tournament and everything around it. Again, it's, it's two sides of the story. You have to invest, but we have to say and, and see what uh, benefits can the clubs get. Because right now the clubs invest a lot in youth and the budgets are huge. But they can leave without getting any, you know, payments or without getting buyouts, which, which is, again, something that would make sense for clubs and the league to invest more. So, of course, we want to promote. We have to focus on young guys, uh, what, what's happening in the U.S. with NCAA and, you know, all these other leagues that, that give much better conditions that were given before. In Europe, we have to adjust as well and see how we can make it work because there's a lot of talent in Europe and uh, exactly. for us to stay and for them to stay longer in EuroLeague and Euro Cup teams, it would only benefit us and then benefit, uh, benefit the NBA because, again, I think my mentality is you have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, we are the best in growing players. Mm -hmm. That's how Luka Doncic comes here and, you know, that's how the other guys come here. But... If we focus and we agree that, you know, all sides agree that it's good to stay in Europe for a couple of years, achieve the mentality, know the game, understand the game and then come here, I mm -hmm. think it's better than, you know, take them away when they're 16 or, or 15 and, and not have the European experience. You see me smiling because I see that I understand that you have a lot of things in mind that will benefit this league, that will benefit any further co collaborations with other leagues because we need to collaborate. The world of basketball is, is a big community and we need to help each other. So I saw Tokos Angelia the other day, yesterday, I think, and I was like, what are you doing here? They told me about the course that they're trying to do, the business course with the ELPA. That's another collaboration. So we bring those sides together. Yep. And I think that it will be amazing if it's achievable uh, to, to have collaborations with Summer League to different levels. Listen, I'm always positive. It starts with the idea, then you sit down and you start breaking it down. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But of course, we need to give it a try. Uh, like I said, I'm really positive about all these things. Okay, it was uh, a pleasure having you here uh, and an honor. Uh, you have done a lot of things around basketball. I can't wait to see what you're going to do uh, now from the position that you are. You have more power. You have uh, a lot of people that are willing to work to make this league better and to have further collaborations. So I'm going to wish you good luck. Thank, Thank you. you for being uh, in our show. Nice seeing you in uh, Summer League and see you when the season starts. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thanks all of you for watching the international show here in uh, uh, Las Vegas Summer League.